we're in a very historic place right now. And it's really worthwhile to think about that just for a moment. Because the rate at which our world can spin out of control is absolutely astounding. I really think that they play a crucial part. I think the things that we need to be, to be concentrating on are those things that allow us to debate what the past means for the present. It's really a great thing. The more open we are to people's suffering, the greater is our capacity to do something about it. to think, to complain, and to make our voices heard. En met de feestelijke klanken van de kinderen van Zing Zang Zong, waarover ik u later meer zal vertellen, heet ik u graag van harte welkom op deze plechtige uitreiking van de eredoctoraten van de Universiteit Antwerpen. Elk jaar rijkt de universiteit aan een aantal zeer bijzondere mensen die in hun vakdomein baanbrekend werk verrichten een eredoctoraat uit. Wie dit zijn en waarom zij gekozen werden, dat zal gedurende deze middag duidelijk worden. Eerst vraag ik professor Herman van Goetem, rector van de Universiteit Antwerpen, het podium te betreden voor het officiële openingswoord. Dear friends, geachte dames en heren, eredokter, geachte hoogwaardigheidsbekleders van het politieke, geestelijke, diplomatieke, consulaire en universitaire korps, geachte professoren, medewerkers, studenten, dames en heren, namens de Universiteit Antwerpen heet ik u van harte welkom in de Aula Rector Danis hier op deze plechtige uitreiking van de eredoctoraten 2018. I would like to extend a specially warm welcome to our five honorary degrees, doctors. We are really honored with your presence. Ere doctor in spe, eigenlijk, want ze moeten nog een heel klein beetje geduld uitoefenen. Ze leerden elkaar al kennen tijdens een gezellig diner gisteravond. En aan u, beste mensen in de zaal, stellen we vandaag deze interessante mensen voor, stuk voor stuk toppers, koplopers in hun domein, zo dadelijk meer. U leerde hen misschien vandaag al wel Kennen, want deze excellente wetenschappers gaven al een masterclass aan onze universiteit voor onze studenten en onderzoekers en belangstellende mensen uit het werkveld. En die lezingen werden druk bijgewoond en dat verheugt ons. En eigenlijk ook ikzelf, ook onze eigen professoren en docenten beleven zo opnieuw een beetje de opwinding als student. Ik vond het deze ochtend bijzonder opwindend om op de rand van mijn stoel met open mond te luisteren naar de masterclass die ik bijwoonde, die van Jeffrey Sachs. Je krijgt niet elke dag les van een buitenlandse topper met een rugzak vol expertise. Esteemed honorary doctors, the University of Antwerp is delighted to welcome you here today. That goes without saying. The conferral of the honorary degrees is always one of the highlights of our academic year. Often, an honorary doctor is an example to others, someone to look up to. And often they are people who our professors have had long and fruitful collaboration with. Collaboration, that's what it's all about. Now more than ever. Together we can do more, we can achieve more. Not only when it comes to scientific research, but also, and perhaps more importantly, in society. I could try, esteemed audience, to convince you of the importance of collaboration but there is someone here today who can do that much more powerful than I can. It's time to introduce the stars of today's ceremony, the University of Antwerp's new honorary doctors. Let's shape the future together. I 
I will now switch to English out of appreciation for our five English speaking laureates. Welcome to you all. We will start this ceremony and this joyful afternoon with the Faculty of Laws laureate, Professor Upendra Bakshi. Professor Bakshi is associated with the universities of Warwick and Delhi and Delhi's National Law University. The laudation will be given by Professor Wouter van den Hole and followed by Professor Bakshi's word of thanks. But first, let us watch the introduction video. Faculteit Rechten reikt het eredoctoraat uit aan professor Upendra Bakshi. Upen, voor de vrienden, hij heeft altijd gewerkt op thematiek van de grondwet en de mensenrechten in het bijzonder. En in een gecontextualiseerde benadering, dus waarbij je altijd gaat zien wat betekent dat recht voor de samenleving. I have a dream today. Wat echt wel heel kenmerkend is voor Pendra Bakshi's benadering van mensenrechten is dat hij het auteurschap van mensenrechten niet plaatst in grote mensenrechtenverklaringen of in VN-verdragen of onderhandelingen, maar heel sterk plaatst bij mensen die lijden. En dus zegt dat human suffering het echte auteurschap is, de echte auteurs zijn van de mensenrechten. Human rights are not a gift of the West to the rest. Die morele superioriteit van het Westen, dat hij die ook helemaal onderuit gehaald heeft. Dus je kan zeggen dat hij de geschiedenis als het ware van de mensenrechten herschrijft. Niet de letterlijke geschiedenis van de mensenrechten, maar de hele insteek zet hij helemaal op zijn kop. En door heel sterk ook te gaan beklemtonen dat dat menselijk lijden overal ter wereld is. Ook dat is een thematiek geweld tegen vrouwen waar hij al heel lang ontwerkt. Maar ook de grote maatschappelijke thema's, ook macro-economisch bouwen van dammen, klimaatverandering zijn thema's die hij opneemt. Ik denk dat je kan zeggen dat Pendra Bakshi echt de luis in de pels is van de mensenrechtengemeenschap, maar ook omdat hij scherp kritiek uitoefent op de recente productie van nieuwe mensenrechtennormen. En hij spreekt over een kermis van productie, hoe meer hoe beter, stel daar kritische vragen bij. Maar het gaat nooit verschuiven naar een soort mensenrechten cynisme, wat je wel ziet bij andere kritische stemmen ten opzichte van de mensenrechten. Hij blijft heel constructief ook naar die mensenrechten kijken als een sterk normatief anker. Door zijn ideeën heeft hij echt wel ons denken beïnvloed en dus ook de wereld wat anders ingekleurd. Als uitgangspunt en als toetsteen voor vooral ons denken en handelen. Professor Bakshi, open, if I may. A laudation runs the risk of being exuberant or even carnivalistic, to borrow your own words. So I will mention only in passing that you have been honored with several honorary degrees already, as well as other prestigious awards. Neither will I dwell on your selection by Twining as one of the big four Southern jurists on human rights. I will say no more about your intellectual leadership as a prominent Indian constitutionalist, as an expert in Western legal philosophy, or as the founder of the sociology of law in India. Instead, I will recall four of my encounters with you and your ideas, which have transformed my own thinking and strongly influenced the vision and mission of our Law and Development Research Group at the Faculty of Law. Our very first encounter was in 1994 in London, where you were one of the judges in the People's Tribunal on the Bhopal disaster. Your scholarship has always been activist and seeks to defend the interests of some of the most vulnerable in society. Our second encounter in 1991, 1999 in Delhi was a virtual one. 
in the many interviews I had with judges, advocates, and activists as a PhD student, you were hailed as a pioneer in social action litigation and epistolary jurisdiction, which led to a renewed legal activism in court. Our third encounter, again virtual, was through your seminal work, The Future of Human Rights, which was also repeatedly mentioned this, mor this morning in the masterclass. This book, in which you criticize human rights for being often trade-related and market-friendly, epitomizes your role as a major knowledge producer from the Global South. Our fourth encounter took place in 2016 at a conference on reinventing development at the University of Warwick. You talked about climate change justice, which, in your own words, requires epistemic insubordination. It illustrates your visionary and provocative scholarship beyond questions of human rights. In the future of human rights, you famously argue that human rights are not gifts of the West to the rest. What is certain is that you and your work are gifts of the rest to the West. For these reasons, I request that the rector honor Professor Pedra Bakshi with an honorary degree from the University of Antwerp. on the recommendation of the Faculty of Law and by decision of the Executive Board, the University of Antwerp confers upon Professor Upendra Baxi, Emeritus Professor of Law at Universities of Warwick and Delhi and the National Law University Delhi, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa in Law for his groundbreaking contribution to a theory of justice that makes the poor and the oppressed the main authors of human rights, including his seminal work, The Future of Human Rights, for his founding role in the sociology of law in Asia, and for his relentless human rights activism inside and outside the courtroom for the victims of the Bhopal disaster women victims of violence, and so many other poor and oppressed groups. Distinguished Rector, the Dean, Faculty of Law, Dr. Zavuto Van Hall, co-panelists uh, who have uh, been, uh, been awarded Doctorate Honoris Causa, friends from the University community, and distinguished gentle persons. I'm a feminist in practice, and therefore I do not divide human beings into two classes, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why it's a gentle persons. Thank you, Mr. Rector, for the award of this degree, which for I shall ever treasure, because it comes from a great center of learning, which is interdisciplinary in nature. And this sojourn in a great and beautiful city. I'm sure the university and the city will grow to greater heights and greater strength 
in a spirit of critical solidarity. As I said this morning in this slave class, it was called a master class, but I believe in Hegelian dialectic of master and slave. I um, am a great believer in the unscripted human rights more than the written human rights. And one of the human rights which is not written is the right to laugh together. It is much better to laugh together, in our opinion, than to yield to the terror of instrumental reason, which often masquerades as development. Contingency, irony, satire, and solidarity are weapons of the weak against the power. I also believe, with the learned lecture, in taking the human rights of those who are not here, living, dead, seriously. I will believe that we can take the rights of those living seriously only when we learn to treat with dignity the human rights of those who are dead. So together, let us resolve, as the rector said in his 2017 address to the university, together let us resolve the tendency towards evacuation of the Enlightenment values throughout the world and make third worldism an ideology for the future of humankind. The whole world is fast becoming, I believe, a third world in a pejorative sense. Let us set together that unhistoric sense. Let us also dedicate ourselves in reversing Antonio Gramsci, who said we should develop optimism of will and pessimism of reason. I believe we must reverse him and practice the optimism of the intellect and pessimism of will. Let us together, dear friends, let us together fight for a more equitable and a more just world order. Thank you very much. The Faculty of Pharmaceutical, Biomedical, and Veterinary Sciences awards its honorary degree to Professor John F. Cryan of University College Cork. After the introduction video, Professor Jean-Pierre Timmermans will offer his laudation before handing over to Professor Cryan for his word of thanks. De faculteit wenst het herendoctoraat te geven aan professor John Cryan aanwille van zijn baanbrekend onderzoek naar de mechanismen die aan de grondslag liggen van de communicatie tussen de hersenen en ons tweede brein, de bezenuwing van het maag-darmkanaal. Een buikgevoel of vlinders in de buik hebben of het gezegde van de liefde van de man gaat door de maag, gaat dus ook hier deze begrippen in een wetenschappelijk andere context plaatsen. En misschien moeten we dan ook naar de toekomst wel eens gaan kijken dat ook misschien alle behandelingen van de ziekte moeten starten eigenlijk vanuit de darm. We moeten zeer goed beseffen dat dat microbioom 
dat dat eigenlijk toch wel een zeer grote impact heeft. We realiseren het ons niet, maar we hebben ongeveer vijf keer meer bacteriële cellen in ons lichaam dan dat we humane cellen hebben. En om het dan met de boutade van professor Kryan te zeggen, telkens malen we naar het kleine kamertje gaan, worden we tijdelijk een beetje meer menselijker. Het grensverleggende onderzoek van professor Kryan, de stress, depressie, autisme, veroudering, neurodegeneratieve ziekten zoals Alzheimer en Parkinson. En misschien is het op dit moment nog een droom, maar wel een realistische droom. Dat we dus inderdaad op die bacteriële stammen kunnen ingrijpen om op die manier eigenlijk bij te kunnen dragen tot een verbetering van de mentale gezondheid. Het is vooral dit out-of-the-box denken dat eigenlijk zijn onderzoek zo interessant maakt. Dit zowel fundamenteel onderzoek als dat klinisch onderzoek noopt eigenlijk de moderne geneeskunde tot het herdenken van een aantal concepten en dus ook het aanpassen en het ontwikkelen van een aantal nieuwe therapeutische strategieën. En dat is dus uiteraard ook het belang van zijn werk. In awarding this honorary degree, the Faculty of Pharmaceutical, Biomedical and Veterinary Sciences at the University of Antwerp wishes to pay tribute to Professor John Kryan in recognition of his groundbreaking and pioneering contributions to both basic and clinical research on the mechanisms by which our gut microbiota impacts the development and function of our brain. His research, which stems from his interest in understanding the neurobiological basis of stress-related neuropsychiatric disorders, has gradually expanded to include the rapidly evolving field of microbiome brain interactions and has highlighted the importance of what is referred to as the brain-gut microbiome axis. Indeed, The crucial role of the gut microbiota in human health and disease has been increasingly acknowledged over the last five to ten years. Alterations in the composition of the gut microbiota may underlie the latent and earliest onset of a number of human pathologies, including Alzheimer's disease. Only now are we beginning to realize that the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's is increased by a number of factors, such as high-fat diets and administration of antibiotics, factors which are directly or indirectly linked to our gut microbiome. A major challenge ahead will be to deepen our current knowledge of how exactly the specific composition and degree of diversity of the microbiome affects our physical and mental health. The possibility that, for example, antibiotic treatments in early life might trigger far-reaching events later on forces us to think about how these processes impact the delicate balance between the protective and deleterious functions of our bac bacterial friends in our bowel. And John Kryan's research has, to a decisive extent, shaped our current views in this respect and made it clear that it is of utmost importance to understand the role of dysbiosis in brain physiology and pathology. John, your enthusiastic and compelling multidisciplinary approach based on out-of-the-box thinking, which challenges existing assumptions and views, has implications across many aspects of medicine, including psychiatry, gastroenterology, obstetrics, gynecology, pediatrics, neurology, and aging. Your research has led and will continue to lead to the thorough revision of multiple concepts and therapeutic strategies in present-day medicine. And for the above reasons, I request that the rector confer upon Professor John Kryan an honorary degree from the University of Antwerp.
on the recommendation of the, of the Faculty of Pharmaceutical, Biomedical and Veterinary Sciences and by decision of the Executive Board, the University of Antwerp confers upon Professor John F. Cryan, Chair of the Department of Anatomy and Neurosciences, University College Cork, and leading PI at the APC Microbiome Institute, Cork, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa in Microbial Endocrinology and Behavioral Neurobiology for his groundbreaking contributions in both fundamental and clinical research on the impact of our good microbiota on brain development and brain functioning, which have led to new medical insights and innovative future therapeutic strategies for physical and mental health in young and aged populations. Distinguished Rector, uh, Vice Rectors, Deans, my good uh, friend and promoter, uh, um, members of the faculty and distinguished guests, um, I'd really like to thank you for this um, amazing honour uh, in, in recognising our research on uh, gut-brain signalling. Uh, for me it's particularly notable uh, that while for a lot of the world this concept that the gut uh, may play a key role in regulating many aspects of uh, physiology um, and that this is, is, is quite new to, to a lot of the world, that here in Antwerp this is an old story and uh, a lot of the leading work uh, on gut physiology, uh, there's a long tradition of it here uh, and in Belgium in general. Uh, our work then on the microbiome perhaps has added uh, a new and partially unexpected dimension and taking me on this weird and wonderful journey uh, that I've been on. Uh, I'm reminded of the words of a fellow uh, Irishman, uh, William Butler Yeats. Uh, Yeats said that the world is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. And it is an exciting time uh, in science there are great new advances in technology and uh, importantly, traditional uh, discipline barriers are being broken down all the time. And my success has been mainly due to uh, being driven into an interdisciplinary way, uh, working with colleagues in different areas. I'd also like to acknowledge that science is really a team sport. And, and uh, to thank uh, my wonderful collaborators uh, and all of the trainees who have come through uh, my lab over the years. It's their work that has helped propel uh, me uh, here today. I'd also like to thank my wonderful wife and my kids who are here. And uh, it truly has been a magical journey. Uh, and Antwerp, uh, you have really sharpened my senses even more today. Thank you very much. At the start of this ceremony, you heard the children of Sing Zang Zong performing their opening song, which was especially written for this occasion. Some of these children were born here, but many come from far away and have only recently arrived here in Antwerp. With their families, they fled war and violence, poverty and politics. But now, they are here. For these children, aged between 6 and 15, everything is new. A new school, new friends, a new home. Zing Zang Zong, founded in 2012, aims to support them in this. The organization helps children to learn Dutch and to understand each other through singing and music classes, which they offer free of charge. And while the children are singing, their parents can practice Dutch with language volunteers. 
The many performances put on by the group help the families get to know our society better. And what better way to do this than through music, a universal language whose melodies often say more than words can. Striking the right notes can bring people together. And that's what, how Zing Zang Zung helps children and their parents make a new start. Who knows, which of them will become the laureates of the future? The entire project is run by a fantastic team of volunteers with the support of MAGO, one of Antwerp's art academies. Please join me before the musical interlude starts in a thunderous round of applause for the volunteers, the founders, and of course for the children of Zing Zang Zung.
they definitely hit the right notes. The recipient of the honorary degree in social sciences is Professor Michael D. Slater of the Ohio State University. After the introduction video, Professor Heidi van der Bos will deliver the laudation before Professor Slater gives his thank you speech. Wij kennen Michael Seiter, een eredoctoraat toe, omwille van zijn belangrijke bijdrage in het onderzoek naar effecten van media. En meer bepaald de invloeden van media op gezondheidsovertuigingen en gezondheidsgedragingen van mensen. Alcohol is toxic and your body is fragile. Naast klassieke voorlichtingscampagnes heeft hij aangetoond dat ook verhalen een belangrijke invloed kunnen hebben op wat mensen denken over gezondheid. Ja, een film zoals bijvoorbeeld Philadelphia van Tom Hanks, die gaat over AIDS en HIV, kan op die manier een heel belangrijke rol gespeeld hebben in het bewustzijn en de kennis ook van mensen rond dat gezondheidsprobleem. heeft zeker ook aan uh, bijvoorbeeld media professionals aangetoond welke soorten van boodschappen via welke kanalen welke soorten van publieken kunnen overtuigen. Op die manier houdt hij mediamakers ook een spiegel voor en wijst hen ook op de mogelijke negatieve gevolgen van hun uh, inhouden en van de programma's die ze bijvoorbeeld maken. Hij is op dat vlak echt uh, een voortrekker geweest. Het zijn allemaal dingen die relevant zijn voor ons en natuurlijk de gezondheid van een totale populatie. Een uh, veelbesproken theorie van hem is het reinforcing spirals model. Het uh, gaat ervan uit dat mensen bepaalde media inhouden selecteren, maar ook dat die media vervolgens een invloed kunnen hebben op hen. Nu, dat is heel relevant, zeker ook in de huidige context, met nieuwe media. En heel belangrijk daar is dat uh, de algoritmes achter die sociale media ook bijhouden wat je bijvoorbeeld hebt geliked of wat je hebt geshared. En die bepalen ook dat je vervolgens wordt blootgesteld aan andere soorten van inhouden die daarop gelijken. En daardoor hebben we niet altijd een zicht op wat andere mensen, andere groepen in de maatschappij denken. Dus op die manier uh, helpt zijn theorie ook te verklaren waarom er in bepaalde gevallen ook extremisme kan ontstaan en hoe media daar een bepaalde rol in spelen. En dat is allemaal dankzij het onderzoek van Michael Slater. In awarding this honorary degree, the Department of Communication Studies of the Faculty of Social Sciences wishes to pay tribute to Professor Michael Slater's extraordinary contribution to theories, concepts, and methods for studying media effects, especially in the domain of health. Michael Slater has demonstrated how media portrayals of substance abuse, injuries, and crime can affect us and how communication campaigns on important health issues, such as cancer, can be improved. Professor Slater is a communicator in the true sense of the word. He has brought together ideas and people and created a sense of community. He has successfully integrated insights from other disciplines into communication sciences, and he has also clearly demonstrated that understanding communication processes is crucial for other disciplines as well. He's been a bridging figure internationally and between science and practice and has inspired and mentored new generations of media scholars and communication professionals. Dear Mike, I also think that all of us as media audiences have to thank you for demonstrating that watching television programs and movies is not always just light entertainment. Media content 
can inspire us and even make us better people. In this way, you have provided us with an evidence-based reason to nestle down into a comfortable chair in front of a screen on a Friday evening without feeling guilty. So for these reasons, I request that the Rector honor Professor Michael Slater with an honorary degree from the University of Antwerp. On the recommendation of the Faculty of Social Sciences and by decision of the Executive Board, the University of Antwerp confers upon Professor Michael D. Slater, Distinguished Professor of Social and Behavioral Sciences and Director of the School of Communication at the Ohio State University, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa in Communication Sciences for his groundbreaking contribution to media effects research, especially in the domain of public health, for his theory development, notably the reinforcing spirals model and the EELM, for his scientific advice to health promotion and media professionals, and for his efforts in explaining the power of mediated narratives. In times like these, you know, when in so many venues, the respect for carefully considered evidence, expertise, and thoughtful discourse is under such threat in the US and other places in the world, the meaning and the value of a doctorate of what we all do here has never been so evident to me. These are the values that everyone in this room is committed to uphold. And I think for those of us who are being honored in this extraordinary way, it's a really a deeply moving thing because it does suggest that in some measure, we've reflected these values of thoughtfulness and respect for evidence in our work. So for someone like me who studies communication and uh, feels a lot of pain in seeing what our technology has at times brought us to. It also brings me hope to consider the level of commitment, skill, and uh, insight that so many of you in this room bring. Rector van Kooten, Dean Lautz, Professor Dust, I'd like to thank you for this remarkable honor from this remarkable University. And finally, my particular thanks to my promoter and colleague, Professor Heidi van Bos, for her support, for her cordiality, and especially for her audiophile helping me pronounce Dutch names. Thank you. <laughs> The Department of Heritage Studies in the Faculty of Design Sciences will now pay tribute to Professor Laura Jane Smith of the Australian National University. Professor Alex van Neste will give the laudation before handing over to Professor Smith. After the speeches, the children of Zing Zang Zong will perform for the third time. But first, the introduction film. Thank you. 
Onze faculteit geeft het eredoctoraat aan professor Dr. Laura Jane Smit. Haar verdienste bestaat erin dat zij eigenlijk erfgoed heeft bevrijd van de klassieke sfeer van bewaring en bescherming. Precies door aan alles wat met erfgoed te maken heeft, kritische beschouwingen te koppelen van sociale en culturele aard. En dat heeft voor gevolg dat zij er eigenlijk in geslaagd is om het erfgoed zelf terug te schenken aan de rechtmatige eigenaar ervan, met name de erfgoedgemeenschap. Klassieke erfgoedstudies hebben vooral te maken met de historische aspecten, met esthetische aspecten van erfgoed, ook met de studie van materiaaltechnische elementen en de degradatie daarvan. Maar ze gaat wel een stap verder. Wat zij eigenlijk doet is het erfgoed uit het verleden tillen naar het heden brengen en de waarde van het erfgoed eigenlijk vanuit een actueel perspectief te gaan bekijken. En dat heeft voor gevolg dat eigenlijk sommige identiteiten door het bestuderen van het erfgoed opnieuw ontdekt worden. De manier waarop zij erfgoed bestudeert is een zeer open wijze. En dat heeft voor gevolg dat dat natuurlijk perfect past in uh, actuele ideeën van globalisatie, inter- of multiculturaliteit. Zij interesseert zich bijvoorbeeld heel sterk ook aan tentoonstellingstechnieken en de politiek van de overheid in het kader van toerisme. Omdat dat geen vrijblijvende zaken zijn. In een tentoonstelling kan je eigenlijk op een zulkdanige manier erfgoed objecten tentoonstellen dat ze een invloed hebben op de kijker. De kijker is niet altijd de passieve ontvanger. Kortom, je zou kunnen zeggen... Communicatie rondom erfgoed is ook een van de sterke punten van Laura Jane Smith. En dat maakt haar onderzoek uiteraard zeer uniek. Traditionally, heritage studies focus almost exclusively on the material characteristics of objects in order to cope with their material degradation. Professor Laura Jane Smith initiated a new approach called critical heritage studies. She shows us that heritage should be understood as a social and cultural practice and that heritage objects make tangible the values and identity of a community. In addition to her comprehensive and outstanding scientific output, the most significant aspects of Professor Smith's work is its social-cultural relevance. She attempts to understand how heritage is used as a cultural, social, and often political tool in the processes of remembering, forgetting, and identity construction. Laura Jane Smith has liberated heritage from its imprisonment in the past. Heritage is among us now, often for the better, as it gives us a sense of our identity, but sometimes for the worse, as we've seen, sadly, with the destruction of the Buddhas by the Taliban, or even the debate in Belgium concerning our dark colonial heritage. For many decennia, all over the world, social and cultural identities will continue to be challenged by phenomena like globalism, mass migration, and multiculturalism. That means, Professor Smith, that your work will prove even more relevant in the future than it is today. For these reasons, I request the rector to honor Professor Laura Jane Smith with an honorary degree from the University of Antwerp. On the recommendation of the Faculty of Design Sciences and by decision of the Executive Board, the University of Antwerp confers upon Professor Laura Jane Smith, Director of the Center for Heritage and Museum Studies and Head of the School of Archaeology and Anthropology at the Australian National University, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa in Design Sciences, 
for her highly innovative contribution to the scientific study of heritage, more specifically through the redefinition of material and intangible heritage as dynamic socio-cultural processes that mediate between the past and the future, creating thus space for the rediscovery of forgotten or repressed community identities and the, and the creation of new identities. G'day, um, dear university communi uh, community, thank you very much for this, this, this honour. The masterclass I, I, I gave uh, this morning was on the emotion of, of heritage and, yes, I am, <laughs> they, had, they had to staple my gown, <laughs> um, uh, was on, on uh, the emotion of the past and, and, the, and the, emotion, uh, the emotions that heritage in, invoke and I find myself emotionally overcome. I am so deeply honoured to receive this award and to receive it in the company that, in, in the company to which I find myself. Um, congratulations all to my fellow honorary doctorates. Um, it, is, it is a wonderful thing that, that um, is being bestowed upon us. Um, I would uh, very much like to thank the, the, the university and, and in partic particular uh, the rector, uh, Professor Hermann von uh, Hutem, and uh, the Faculty of, uh, of Design Sciences, and, in, and again in particular, uh, Professor Dr. Alex Van Est, uh, for that very kind uh, introdu introduction. And more specifically, I'd like to uh, thank the, the Department of, of Heritage Studies and, and uh, uh, Dr. Guy uh, Boven for um, the nomination. And I hope that this marks some very fruitful and, and, and useful collaborative future research between uh, the Centre for Heritage and Museum Studies at the ANU and Antwerp University. Uh, while, I mean, heritage studies is, is a relatively new interdisciplinary field. It is a field that is not often considered very uh, academic. It's all about, isn't it all about just managing um, heritage sites and, and places? And there is often a misunderstanding about the, the significance that heritage can have to people's um, sense of, of, of self, um, the, the role that it plays in society. And I'm, while I'm very pleased that this award recognises um, the work that I've done, I am even more deeply pleased and, and, and humbled that it's recognising uh, the legitimacy of heritage studies as, an, um, as a critical and academic uh, in, endeavour. I'd also like to thank my partner who's travelled with me fr um, from Australia and for the unending support that he has given me in uh, my career and from us both. I'd like to thank the university uh, community director uh, and the dean and, and the Department of Heritage Studies for your very warm and generous hospitality while we've been here in, um, here in, in Belgium. It's been, a, it's been a total blast. Thank you so very much um, for this award. Thank you.
Last, but by no means least, we pay tribute to Professor Jeffrey Sachs of Columbia University in New York. Rector Herman van Goetem will deliver the laudation and after, Professor Sachs will offer his word of thanks. But before we hand over to them, let's watch the final introduction video. Jeffrey Sachs is een wereldautoriteit die echt sporen trekt en getrokken heeft op vele domeinen. Zijn aandacht gaat naar duurzame ontwikkeling, ontwikkelingssamenwerking en armoede in de eerste plaats. En hij is wat dat betreft een wereldautoriteit die als expert onder meer gevraagd is voor de Wereldbank, de Verenigde Naties, de Wereldgezondheidsorganisatie. En dat sluit aan bij het beleid en bij de missie die wij ook als universiteit hebben. Dit sluit aan bij wat wij doen en dit sluit ook aan bij wat wij naar de toekomst toe, waar wij meer op moeten inzetten. Jeffrey Sachs heeft al in de jaren 1980 markante stellingen ingenomen en na de val van de muur van Berlijn is hij als adviseur heel actief geweest in de transitie van de Oost-Europese landen naar onze markteconomie. Daar heeft hij een heel belangrijke rol gespeeld. Daarnaast heeft hij ook vaak verdedigd dat de grote maatschappelijke problemen zoals klimaatverandering, armoede, overbevolking en honger, dat dat eigenlijk problemen zijn die niet duur zijn om op te lossen. Het oplossen van die problemen kost misschien 1% van de begroting van de rijkste landen ter wereld. Hij zegt het is geen geldprobleem, maar het is een probleem van samenwerking. Want het is alleen in samenwerking dat we die mondiale problemen kunnen oplossen. Die idee is een idee die vandaag de dag heel belangrijk is. Hij zegt, indien wij de wereld van morgen willen aanpakken, moeten we inzetten op een heel aantal domeinen tegelijk. Hij noemt het wicked problems. Hij zegt, het is geclusterd, in elkaar verbonden, maar dat vraagt een volledige herdefiniëring. Niet alleen van ons economisch denken, maar ook ons sociaal, politiek, maatschappelijk denken. En daar rond vanuit de Millennium Goals heeft Jeffrey Sachs een ongelooflijke trendje. Naar de toekomst toe is het duidelijk dat we de grote samenlevingsproblemen niet op een regionaal of op een nationaal niveau kunnen oplossen, maar dat dit de grenzen moet overstijgen. En dit vraagt om internationale samenwerking. En het grote belang van Jeffrey Sachs is dat hij dit allemaal samenbrengt in één globale visie. En eigenlijk die globale visie moeten wij nu gaan uitzetten in ons onderwijs aan de universiteit en in de wereld. Die grote uitdaging, als dat er binnen zoveel jaren zal zijn, dan is dat ook mee het gevolg van Jeffrey Sachs, zijn Sustainable Development Goals en zijn hele leven, zijn missie zoals die dat heeft gezien en nog ziet. Many researchers dream of making a difference and solving a problem that the world is facing. Universities have a responsibility to contribute to the major societal challenges we are facing nowadays. But often research is fragmented, covering only a specific aspect of a particular problem. Jeffrey Sachs is different. He thinks big and uses his experience, knowledge, charisma, and everlasting positive energy to fight some of the most daring, most complex challenges in the world. Jeffrey 
wants to end extreme poverty, transform the world into a better place, stop environmental degradation and safeguard future living all at the same time. Often he was considered to be a dreamer and sometimes even wildly unrealistic. Yet history so shows that few researchers have made more advances than Professor Sachs in actually transforming the world and having an impact. He has indeed convinced political and industrial leaders, local communities, professors and students of the practical and feasible ways in which we can end extreme poverty and achieve sustainable development. He has inspired an entire ecosystem to work together to achieve the sustainable development goals. Professor Sachs is also remarkable for another reason. He's never afraid of getting his hands dirty in some of the poorest communities in the world. The Millennium Villages project, which he directed, has been key to demonstrating that even the poorest people in remote villages in Africa can escape poverty on a surprisingly low budget of 120 US dollars per person per year. For this reason, the University of Antwerp wishes to honor Professor Jeffrey Sachs with a honorary degree for general merit. Professor Sachs, may I invite you? <laughs> By decision of the executive board, the University of Antwerp confers upon Professor Jeffrey Sachs, director of the Earth Institute, Columbia University, New York, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa for general merit, for his exceptional contribution to the global evolution towards sustainable development. Professor Sachs uses scientific knowledge and a positive attitude to convince political and industrial leaders, local communities and students of feasible ways to end extreme poverty and achieve sustainable development. He is active both globally and locally. Also illustrative are his positions as special advisor to the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan at Ban Ki-moon and as director of the Millennium Villages Project. Distinguished rector and vice rectors and deans, faculty, fellow honorees, my wife Sonia, and uh, friends, and all of the people gathered here. First, uh, uh, you have uh, profoundly honored me and, and all of uh, us today uh, by your grace and. Uh, uh, generosity of uh, spirit and uh, those wonderful words. I think, ladies and gentlemen, it's clear that uh, in addition to uh, the wonderful uh, work of uh, my fellow honorees who I'm so uh, overjoyed to uh, be with today, this is really a celebration of the University of Antwerp and of universities and of what they represent. Uh, when I think about uh, the great uh, people that were awarded uh, today, uh, Professor uh, Boxy and Professor Cryon, Professor Slater, Professor Smith, the common feature that brings uh, all of them together is first, they're all at universities and universities in the in the original Latin sense of community, a community of scholarship. And for us in universities, we feel that we're uh, part of a 
global university, a global community of knowledge, and uh, very privileged, profoundly honored, uh, and uh, our whole lives moved by the fact of being part of that community. And when you think about the awards that were given today, it seems to me that uh, they exemplify uh, precisely why the invention of the university, which it's a global invention, uh, but the university we know in, in many ways is an invention of Europe uh, and medieval Europe in its current form, has been so incredibly fruitful for the world. All of the honorees are involved in the challenge of promoting human well-being. And you take a challenge like that, a challenge like human health and well-being, and immediately you see that addressing such a profound and important task transcends any conceivable disciplinary boundary, any conceivable individual perspective. And when you think about uh, today's honorees, uh, Professor uh, Boxy uh, has uh, shown how human rights can be used to defend the poor from a legal, juridical, uh, advocacy, and power point of view. Uh, he's saving lives through the mobilization of human rights. Professor Cryon is promoting human well-being uh, from a very different perspective, from the gut, uh, and, uh, but not just gut instinct, uh, profound scientific knowledge that uh, gives uh, a basic new insight on what it means to be healthy, how our uh, neurobiological systems work, where anxiety, stress, and other disorders arise, things we could not know intuitively but need uh, the deepest of scientific insights. Professor Slater, helps us to understand well-being uh, in its social context. We live in a world completely uh, uh, beset by uh, media and uh, so much flow of uh, bits of, and bites of information coming our way that to understand even how we perceive and how that affects our behavior uh, is a highly specialized uh, field of endeavor that Professor Slater helps to lead, and as you heard, his research helps us to understand why we eat or choose to behave the way we do and how that can lead to well-being or absolute disorders of well-being. And Professor Smith's direction of thought, which is absolutely fundamental, is that our well-being depends on our place in our culture and in our community. And heritage is not only physical preservation, as you heard, but the preservation of our cultural life, and that's fundamental to our well-being. All of that resonates incredibly with me uh, in all of the, the work that I do. I'm, a, I'm an economist, so I try to push euros and dollars to solve problems. But when I do that, uh, what I try to do is uh, listen as best I can to experts uh, like Professor Boxy and Professor Cran and Professor Slater and Professor Smith that can put the, the content, how should we be devoting our efforts, how should we be using uh, our resources. As an economist, I'm trained to add and subtract resources to understand budgets and uh, how, they, how resources can be mobilized, but to what purpose uh, we should mobilize them can only be understood in the context of this broad knowledge and therefore in the context of a university uh, and what a university can contribute to understanding of human well-being. And I feel that uh, this university and uh, your neighbors, uh, we've been uh, privileged to be visiting Catholic University of Leuven uh, on a couple of occasions recently. Uh, 
are making this unique and ongoing crucial contribution. And I think it's been true of the good that has come from our societies for centuries. Uh, when we were at Leuven, it was to celebrate the 500th anniversary of Sir Thomas More's Utopia, uh, which was published, of course, in Leuven uh, in uh, 1516. And it was in a university context and with Erasmus and uh, the university network of Europe of those days, uh, humanism uh, arose and evolved and the knowledge uh, to uh, create a, a base of uh, the modern world evolved. We face very profound challenges in our world today. Professor Slater alluded to the fact that knowledge itself is under attack. Uh, expertise is directly attacked by powerful interests that uh, don't want to be part of uh, the moral uh, framework that we absolutely need but feel that uh, they can abuse knowledge and truth for their personal uh, prerogatives and, and privilege. But we also face challenges uh, even more profound uh, because the environmental crises, the social crises of an interconnected world of now 7.6 billion people, uh, the facts of the new technologies, the dislocations of all of our societies are profound. In my own country, in the United States, life expectancy is declining these days. Uh, it's declining for many of the reasons that uh, our, uh, my fellow honorees have uh, noted. We're losing community. We're losing trust uh, within our country. Uh, human rights of uh, the poor are being deeply violated. Uh, we're definitely uh, having a problem uh, in our heads, uh, in, our, in our guts. Uh, literally, uh, the world's uh, highest obesity epidemic, a massive uh, depressive disorder uh, epidemic, uh, a massive uh, drug abuse epidemic, uh, a lot of this uh, actually fed by the media as well, by our fast food industries and our, even our pharmaceutical industries, which got America addicted on opioid, prescription opioids uh, in an absolutely shameless way. So for me, an honor like this and a chance to join wonderful fellow honorees and to join this faculty together today and to become a member of this phenomenal scholarly community of the University of Antwerp is something very, very special and very important. We have a lot of work to do together. Uh, I count on that. It's been wonderful, Mr. Rector, to be with you today and to hear all of your very strong words about the role that you see University of Antwerp playing in the future in global problem solving. I could see it in the faces of the students in the master class today, which was deeply inspiring. So we look forward to working closely with you, being together again soon with you, and just to express from Sonia, who's my partner in everything, uh, and from me, our profound gratitude. Thank you very much. We are nearing the end of the ceremony, but perhaps something new is about to begin. We have a lot of work together, as Mr. Sachs said. Thank you to all of our honorary doctors and their supervisors. And a very important thank you is also due to the partners of the laureates. Where would they be without you? In the order in which the degrees were conferred, we thank Mrs. Buxy, Mrs. Cryan, Mrs. Slater, Mr. Campbell, and Mrs. Sachs. <laughs> and
En ook wil ik u hartelijk bedanken voor uw bijdrage aan deze feestelijke middag. En de feestelijkheden gaan nog even door. In naam van Universiteit Antwerpen nodig ik u graag uit op de receptie die plaatsvindt in de foyer van dit gebouw. Maar voordat u gaat, vraag ik u te wachten met de zaal te verlaten totdat de eerste rijen de zaal hebben verlaten. En bij het buitengaan hoort u het lied van de Vlaamse gemeenschap in de bewerking van Robert Grollo. Ik hoop dat u een hele mooie avond ingaat. I wish you a very pleasant evening. Dank u wel. Thank you.